Let's talk about unleashing and embracing our strengths. Hi, I'm Jane Mott, a makeup artist and beauty coach, specialising and passionate about sharing tips and techniques that women over 40 can use every day to look younger, feel energised and more confident. And joining me today is the lovely Juliet, who is a personal development coach. And we're going to be talking about how to embrace, discover and harness your strengths. So hi, Juliet. Thank you so much for joining me today. It would be really great if you could just introduce yourselves to the viewers. Well, hi, Jane, and thanks so much. Um, you're very privileged to be invited um, to talk to your audience today. Um, I, I am a personal development coach and trainer and have been doing that for 20 years plus. The plus is my business, um, that's about the age thing. Um, and yeah, really, really passionate about people looking to use what they already have, but cover up. So this is about unlocking those things that sometimes we just fling away because we already have them. And that definitely is something we say about our strengths. Yeah, and I know the first time I met you and heard you speak, I really um, felt your passion for this topic. It really sort of shine, shines out of you. So it's, it's really great to have you here today. So how do we guide individuals in the process of identifying their new strengths and unique strengths and talents? Well, Jane, the way that I work um, is on the initial time that I meet somebody um, is my whole thing is to uncover what they already have. So I follow it loosely, and I'm saying loosely because I adapt everything I do to the individual I'm talking to, but a seven sort of step process. So it, it starts with that chat that getting to know somebody, that building rapport, because you know as a coach, that if that doesn't happen, nothing else is gonna come from whatever we do together. So it's getting to know who they are and also to know what's important to them. Um, and by listening to them at this stage, what I'm gaining is an insight into their drivers, um, their motivators, their passions, their dislikes. So a bit about who they are. So I ask questions really just to, to get to know them. Um, the next part of this is, is an exercise where I share with them, and I, yeah, I've started doing this online since um, the, the, the dreaded COVID, um, has forced us all to be more creative and innovative, um, is to do something that I used to do face to face and will do again face to face, is to do it online, which is to show people a set of um, pictures and these photographs, unbeknown to the person who's picking them, only I know that and I'll be reading that afterwards, um, are aligned to certain types of strengths. So the first thing I do is to get them to look at the pictures and pick one or two images that resonate with them that they think about, they would think about in relation to an achievement or success or some a proud moment in their lives. Once they have picked those pictures, we discuss them a little bit and we put them to one side. Um, and we'll come back to them in a moment. And what I do then is to get them to share with me verbally an achievement given me as much detail as possible. So as a coach, I'll ask them some questions, if, if things, you know, are, are the what else? Um, how did that feel? Who else was involved? What was your involvement? But to get them to talk about achievement. And as they're doing this, as they are sharing their story of achievement, I am listening and observing um, a number of things. The language they use, their facial expressions, their body movements, signs of joy, triumph, determination, all of those come across when you're talking about something you've achieved. Yeah, so you're looking at eyes what comes around that global listening, um, which we as coaches um, practice 
and developed to, to do. Yeah, I know when I did the looked at the pictures myself with you, I was drawn to one in particular and it was surprisingly accurate. And um, yeah, I sort of went away and thought, oh my goodness, that is actually so, so true. And it's a strength I hadn't ignored, but hadn't really considered to be a strength. So the, that simple thing with the pictures is, is powerful, very powerful indeed. Um, and I, I came away and was can see how that can align that aligning that strength um, with with career goals. So that would be my next question. What strategies can you use to um, utilize and align your strengths in towards to meet your career goals? And absolutely understanding is it. It's with all of us, you know, that who am I question that we often have. And as we get maybe get older or we get um, our self-awareness um, increases, we ask our question, who am I? And what do I really want? Not what would I like? What's going to satisfy somebody else? And part of what I do is I work with people who are going through um, I'm, I'm going to say transition, but it's sort of a next stage in their life. And we've gone through lots of stages to get where we're standing now. Mm -hmm. And as far as a career goes, um, you can maybe think, oh, I'd love to do this. However, when you look at, for instance, your strengths, how do they fit? How would they get you to that space? So um, one of the examples, in fact, somebody I worked with this morning, believe it or not, um, was talking about social work. Um, it's something she's been doing for a while, but she wants to move on. And we talked about how things line up. So one of her particular strengths was resilience. Now, the thing that makes a really outstanding social worker is resilience. Their ability to bounce back even when things aren't always going well. They get knocked in the press, they've got a heavy caseload, you know, things they hear are not things you and I would want to hear every day anyway. You know, most of us would go, let somebody else hear that. So your ability to bounce back, that, that resilience was something um, that was one of her strengths. Also creativity, that ability to solve problems on the go. Yeah. Um, and when we were talking about Matt, she went, oh, wow. I use all of those, I mean, and we all can do all the strengths, by the way, you know, there's a set probably of 96, but the, the main 24, all of us have those in us. The thing is, what we're saying is, the ones at the top of the, the cream, as it were, on the milk, they're the ones that we can pull out and should be using regularly. And there's usually between three or five of those to be to be honest that we can we can actually go do you know what if i just allow myself to remember that i'm i'm resilient i'm gonna get through this rather than okay. worrying about not Once being you know the top three strengths or even your top five but obviously we're talking about the top three yeah. i think that helps you they can help you through your weak areas because I know in the in the career world and in the corporate world quite often in interviews and it's it's like oh well you know I've got to work on your weaknesses work on your weaknesses work on your weaknesses and I think certainly myself growing up I first start went out to work in the 80s and it was very much about working on strengthening your weaknesses and I do think the world everything well things are evolving, um, the stars are aligning for the 2020s and lots of stuff is happening. Um, but I'm so glad that the youth of today need, seem to be a lot more positive and focusing on positives. And it's not, for example, um, my husband wanted to be an interior designer and he was told, oh no, that's a very risky business. You could go to college for seven years and then come out of it. And, you know, you won't have any, you know, you won't have a job, better stay in engineering, which is what the family's done. Mechanics all, you know, all their lives, that's a safe bet. People always need their cars repairing. And then bizarrely, seven years later, when he would have been qualifying, changing rooms had been on the telly 
and interior design was absolutely booming. Wasn't so it? I love the fact that now very much, especially with the youth, I've noticed it's if you can dream it, you can do it. If you can believe it, you can achieve it and do what you're passionate about in your life. Um, absolutely. So, yeah, I think it's definitely concentrate on your strengths and your passions, because I think they they are intrinsically linked anyway. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's definitely I think that the distinction between the two is hugely important. Well, without a doubt. And by, by recognising what your strengths are, so whether you do this process with me or, or any other way, is when you know what they are, you can see how they fit in what you've got a desire for. Somehow, you know, I'd love to say I know what the, the, you know, the connections is. Somehow they seem to line up. <laughs> you somehow, uh, you know, the strengths are, and, and, you know, the ones we're talking about, Jane, here are innate strengths. These are things that you are born with. You didn't go and learn them. Yeah. You didn't pick them from somebody else. You weren't. You didn't have an impression, which is how we often get our, our point of view and our beliefs and all of all the other things that lie below us. Strengths are not those. You actually were born like, like this. And what often happens is people don't always recognise what they are for themselves. But worse than that, if you're a parent or somebody helping somebody else, if you don't help somebody recognise them, they become nothing. So, so you know, yeah. probably yeah. we take it for granted a little bit too much. Absolutely, it's like, oh well, that's nothing. Well, and I think sometimes we think is. because we can do something. Everyone's good at that. They're good at the things they're good at, and that's you know that word authenticity and uniqueness is something we need to all grasp onto and hold onto and go. There is nobody like me, and that's nothing to do with ego. That just is a fact nobody's made up like you are and yeah. other people might have similar strengths but they won't have the same combination and they won't be in the same depth they just won't it would always they're always your things yeah you stands for unique. unique yes unique to you imperfectly perfect yeah but i think yeah we can when we're used to having a strength and it's there all the time i think we we can accidentally take it for granted and just assume everyone's got it yeah absolutely we overlook them as if they're nothing as in they have no value um but also i think for me one of the things i'm really keen for people to do is to keep bringing them out do you know what i mean remind yourself what they are because when times get tough that's the thing that you can switch on like that. You can switch it on. You don't even have to have any time at all. You can just switch it on. And not being funny, I'm a smarter rather than harder worker. My, you know, bless her, my mother, rest in peace. My mother would say that if lazy person finds the easiest way, yeah. I said, mother, the yeah. politically correct way is work smarter, not harder. <laughs> absolutely i will always my mother would always say you always find the quickest shortest way to something and i don't know whether she was saying it in compliment and i'm sure at that time it probably wasn't but i have realized it's not a bad thing to use what i've got you know they were given to me as a gift why wouldn't i use them so definitely with strengths and career it's lining those up the other thing i think to remember about career and strengths is that if you are looking to do something and your, your inner voice is telling you that, that something isn't right around, around that, then it probably isn't. And I think that's one of the unique and innate things that Women we need. Women especially have to go really good, strong yeah. intuition, but I think sometimes we just think it's a silly voice in our head yeah. and push it to one side. But it's that's when I think I'm a great believer in is it coming from my head or is it coming from my gut? my gut? Yeah, absolutely. And having those, how, you know, that, that question, okay, if I want to do this, how would I use my strength here? Well, you, you wouldn't, or you'll only use it a bit. Well, how happy are you going to be not using it? Because it's a huge motivator and it brings real joy when you're using them because it's, it's fun. 
it's, it's not hard work, you know. I'm sure you've done things where you've gone, everyone's gone, golly, you've done so much. And you've gone, oh, that wasn't hard work. And it wasn't that you didn't know how much effort you put in. It's just that it felt so blasted good. It felt yeah. good. So, and, and that's what kept you going, even when actually, you know, how much energy was needed, how much time was needed. But actually, you loved it. And that's what strength, how you feel when you're using your strengths. You feel good rather than you feel. And I mean, really I think happy. when we spoke before, one thing that really stood out and uh, is quite common between me and my husband is um, op definitely opposites attract. Um, my husband and I, Perry, are, uh, we're renovating a house. And he likes, he's um, a perfectionist. And he's very particular about how he th wants things done. When he's not within earshot, I call it anal. Um, <laughs> so he'll come in and I'm decorating a room. And he's like, why are you doing it like that? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? You're not supposed to be doing it like that. That's not going to work. And I'm look, like, are you happy with the end result of the lounge? Yes, it's brilliant. You've done a great job. Right. I have learned from that process. This way will work better and I will achieve the end result. So don't worry about how I do it. Just worry about the end result and you know, like go away, do the task you're doing in the kitchen and leave me to decorate this bedroom. Is Everything will be fine. You don't need to worry about it. Yeah. Uh, and it's something about your career for both of us in the because I think he he definitely wants to be the foreman of of the uh, of of the renovation, which is fine. But you know, you go away and do the plumbing in the kitchen and leave me to my decorating. <laughs> um, and one of your strengths is definitely that honest belief that you did, it, tenacious was I think a word that came that you and I talked about is that you are determined to get something done and it's sorted and 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 it, it comes to life and when you're like that you can keep going you know people say oh, i've got to be resilient and that's bouncing back but actually genesis is about that powering through and just getting it done just getting things done and there's something wonderful about people who can do that and i can remember when i was at beauty college years ago the principal saying it doesn't matter she'd learned through teaching you know hundreds thousands of students over the years um it doesn't matter how you get to the end result as long as you get to the correct end result and you haven't obviously you've got to do it in a certain way that you meet the health and safety requirements you do it in a safe safe way but as long as you achieve the end result and the client's happy you're successful it doesn't matter if you took the scenic route or you took a shortcut or you had to go on a diversion. And that's very much that's a perfect um, analogy for life, isn't it? Absolutely. You take the path that works for you. And without without a doubt, I think um, definitely part, a lot of my work and is around helping people find the path that works for them, not one that somebody else has decided not one that you think someone else has decided because we do a lot of that don't we you know um probably when we're younger well, my husband's we, doing it isn't he, that. He's, he thinks i should take that path to decorate yeah. that room and he's decided they're the steps i should be using so why am i walking on that road over there when he thinks i should be on this one absolutely and you know as you say outcomes what are you trying to achieve and that's always, isn't it, from a coaching point of view, start with the end in mind. Know where you want to go. And, you know, you know, things like sat nav and ways and all of that. What are they doing? They're doing one thing. And that's saying getting you to from point A to point B. And they will find whatever route works. It might have been the M1 yesterday, but today it's going to be the, the 405, A41, because there's other traffic. Yeah, because a lorry. You know, if you're going, well, I'm going to stick to the M1 because you know I know that's how I get to that, get to the Midlands. You're right. You will get to the Midlands probably three hours later than everybody else because you've stuck to something. So yeah, there's definitely that 
finding a path that works for you. Yeah, and I think also, because um, as I say, I work with women who are sort of over 40s and beyond. And I think as we go through life, our life purpose changes several times. And I think if you stick with, and I know a lot of women do change careers, certainly they might have a career up until they have children, then they might stop their career, then they might be returners um, and and actually decide to go on a con completely different path. And throughout life, we then, I think our three main strengths remain the same, but you you pull in your secondary ones, different secondary ones, don't you, to to accommodate. So absolutely i think it's, it's a toolkit it, it's it's you know you've yes, got you've been born with a toolkit of stuff and whether you use a hammer or a spanner to knock that nail in it's you've got both the choice is down to you you're right a hammer is what people tell you you're going to use but actually the first thing in your hand is a ban and it worked and it did it's done you know and you know as, as females we might even use the heel of our shoe Let's be yeah, honest. Okay. Because, well, yeah, because, sure. we, because we can, you know, and that is about us. The first thing you have to do, though, is know what tools you've got. Because otherwise you're scrambling, aren't you? You're always scrambling or you're always using somebody else's direction. So if someone's told you always use a hammer. The fact you haven't got one, but you've got a really good, strong pair of shoes next to you. You go, now I've got to wait for a hammer. Well, actually, no, you haven't. The reason is because you know what you've got. And I think that self-awareness is really important. And as we grow and develop as women, definitely because that's, you know, mostly I work with women, we get to understand how much we actually already have. We don't have to go and find it. We already have it. We just need to uncover it, do you know? Clear away the cobwebs or the soil or whatever's covering it has been coming up for years and go look I've got all this and today I'm going to use that one because that's going to be so the much right of your work is about empowering women finding their strengths and finding strengths for women turns them into strong women which mm. brings me on to talk about something I'm very excited to talk about and I know you will be you have an amazing event coming planned in October um, called it's my turn I am, I for one, am very excited to be attending. Um, so please share with us um, what inspired the creation of It's My Turn. Wow, thank you for that. Yes, I'm very, very, very excited, if you can't tell from my first, um, about this event. Um, it's My Turn has been lurking around my mind, brain, my body for some time. Um, I have been wanting, starting, putting off, running an event for women who, like me, have, have got to a point where we have said, OK, we've done lots of stuff. Um, it, we've been successful. So it's not about not being successful. It's about being actually now something that is just for us. And in the, you know, the song, the titles from a Diana Ross song. Um, it's my turn and she talks about going look this is not about shaking off other people or it's not about leaving you know and, and I suppose she's an inferring partner it's not about that it's about me having a go for me right or wrong it's my turn and for me this it's my turn is if not now when because before we know it you know, life takes over and then life ends. Not to be miserable. That, I think that's women true. also, we all have many, many women have many hats, don't they? First of all, mm. we're a daughter. Absolutely. Then we might be a girlfriend. Then we might be a wife. Then we might be a mother. Then we, you know, an auntie and we're this and we're that. So I I can see why it's my turn. It's my turn. It's yeah. physically my turn Get to go. Forward, it's not about leaving other people. It's about claiming your own space. Because I'm, this is who I am. And um, as I said, it, it's been hanging around for a long time. But um, this year, um, I had um, a, a bit of a, a health scare. And the outside, the upshot of that was, it made me think, 
come on, you keep saying to other people, it's my turn. Isn't it your turn to do what I've been saying I was going to do? So not only is the title right for everybody else, but it's definitely right for me. And it really is about bringing together and celebrating the strength of women. I've been surrounded by, I don't even countless strong women. Um, and it's about celebrating our strengths. It's about recognizing that we need to collaborate to get to move forward, that we're not standing on little islands on our own, because that, that, you know, that doesn't work. We don't need to be alone to make things work. Um, and it's about building a community, a community in which supports you. And it's a community in which you feel that you can express yourself as yourself. You don't need to show up as anybody else, just as you. Um, and the whole of the conference is built around those three words, really, which is the collaboration, the celebration, and that whole community and commitment to each other. Yeah, I must admit the word celebration jumped out at me and I thought, yes, it's so important to, to celebrate women. And I think even if you only have like a better, women in general, we usually have a best friend or a couple of best yeah. friends and we create this little sisterhood. I'm not even talking about work now, I'm talking sort of in a personal life. And I think even when we work, there's usually another woman or a couple of women in your workplace, wherever we are, in whatever situation we are, somehow we're drawn together. It's like magnets, and there's this little, this little sisterhood. And I think, certainly from having done women's networking, um, I think women network very differently on when they're on their own to, to mixed. And that's nothing against the men. It's just you know, yeah. we all, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. Um, and there's this real sort of sisterhood and, and and strength. So that certainly has come across to me when you talk about about this event. So Absolutely. can you provide a little glimpse, perhaps, into some of the speakers and the activities planned for the event? Yeah, happy to, happy to. Um, so, um, as I said, I I had a health scare at the beginning of the year. And what it led to was me having one of those moments where you think, I'm going to do something. And what I did was I text, and I do mean text, I don't mean I rang them or had long conversations, a number of women in my life who ha have um, helped me and mentored me along the way and stood by me and, 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 and really supported and been my cheerleaders. And basically said, I'm doing this event. This is what it's called. No idea where it's going to be. No idea anything else. Would you like to speak or be involved? The answer was yes. Not one came back and said no. Not one. And it was all, only that. And one of the first people I wrote out to was a lady called Fiona Harold. And um, if you've never met Fiona, she is phenomenal. And I'm going to use that word a lot because all, all, all these women are phenomenal. Um, she is UK's first ever life coach. She, she, brought, she brought the whole thing alive for all of us. She's got um, countless of books out. Um, she happens to have been my coach, my mentor. I've worked and have coached on her behalf. So I've worked for her as one of her coaches as well. And I'm now very friends. excited that I've got a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've remained friends and um, she is also, you know, she's my mentor in helping me bring this to the to the end result to its um, in October. Um, so, and she just went, yes. I, I think, OK, I know I'm going to have to like, she went, no, just yes, that's it. Don't, don't, it's not a conversation. Yes. So Fiona Howard. OK. Um, the next person I'm going to mention is Nina Grenfield. And Nina Grenfield is the um, CEO, author of Life Clubs. Um, and she, again, has been around in the coaching field for many years. Many people have been coached by her, have done her Life Clubs, have read her books. Um, she's a journalist in The Telegraph. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I can't, you know, I, I could do her bio, but that'd be huge. 
Um, again, somebody I have both worked for, she's mentored me, she's coached me, we've been friends. Again, the same text, yes. No other conversation needed. Now, this is when I think I recognize one of my strengths, which is building communities and building connections. Because, you know, there is no reason these women give up their time to do, to do this stuff, but they are passionate about me doing my stuff, but also passionate about empowering other women. Um, Carol Boskert, who you already know and, and love, Again, Carol and I ran each other many, many years ago. We've coached each other. We've worked with each other. We've done all sorts of things with each other, as well as being friends. She is another one of my speakers. Um, Melanie Elga, again, somebody I've coached. She's coached. And these are all people who have never met each other until last night. We had our first team meeting last night. And they're all on the screen. They went, how do you, how, do you know all these people? And I went, yeah. And I went, how? And I went, that, that, that's a challenge. And, that, and basically, everybody was connected with each other, even though they didn't, had never met. Nina and, uh, and Fiona are, as I say, the biggest names in, in coaching in the UK, the biggest. They have never been on the stage together. And Nina went to Fiona, thank you for all the stuff you wrote, because that made me a coach. Now, when two of the people at the top are going, whoa, <laughs> yeah. So my excitement, Jane, is because not only um, are they bringing their, their, their wealth of stuff to the table, they're bringing their passion for empowering women to stand up and be. And they are, you know, part of, I suppose, the, the 45 plus generation of women who are taking life for themselves you know doing what, what they need to do to to move on and i must admit from a i don't know whether you are very spiritual but from a spiritual point of view the numbers for the numerology and the stars aligning and the planets and um everything i read and i'm i like a bit of spirituality i'm not yeah. into the planets a lot but i do like the numer numerology and the numbers Everything is to do with like 2020. No wonder it was the year of COVID because yeah. 2020, you know, double, double two. And and then what's happening? 21, 22, 23. Um, and it is a very feminine time. So it is, like you say, the 45 plus generation. And, you know, I'm sort of in my early 50s. So I can see. Yeah, it's just the time is now. It's now, it's now. And I think that that is running all the way through what we're going to do. Then I've got some storytellers, some professional storytellers, um, because I do storytelling as well, but they're coming to do some stuff around their lived experience. It's to hear the storytellers because... I, 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 and the way they craft their stories, amazing. I know they're my friends, but then lots of people are. Um, I've got singers. I have got um, dancers, I've got a yoga teacher, I've got reflexology. So put it this way, you're not really going to be bored during the day. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's there will be space for reflection because that's on. important. So I mean, on. Yeah, you will have space for reflection because that's important. And the, and the, the, the you know, the, the hotels giving us a lot of space. Bless I, it. I do this feel event. that so you can you can actually go and just take yourself away or whatever. Absolutely. So that's an insight into some of the, the speakers. I say I'll, I'll be putting on the website, you know, and on Facebook and things. Um, who are the other speakers and storytellers? So everybody gets their name out there. But that's a few to to whet your appetite if that helps. Yeah. So attending this event really offers a valuable opportunity for networking and forming connections with these like what minded, empowered and empowering successful women. So I'm really, really excited to to have my ticket. Sorry to brag. No one loves to brag. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when and where is the event? So the event's on the um, 8th of October. It's a Sunday. And I must start telling people, in fact, uh, you know, we will be catching up with people who are already registered, that it's wearing your Sunday best. Yes, and I that's do know a that. a nod back like that, to yeah. my childhood. 
Um, and yeah, as I say, I'm honoring my, my I was brought up my, going to my church. mother. Got but yeah, a... whatever your Sunday best is, please, yes. Not jeans, I used to get told. Not jeans. Oh, no, oh, no. And there were days, uh, this is this is me getting really old, when people did girls didn't really wear trousers on a Sunday. Um, especially if you're going to church, but now people wear anything the like. But yeah, it is Sunday best. So it's Sunday the 8th of October 2023. It's at Hunton Park Hotel, which um, is in Abbots Langley, Hertfordshire. Um, the nearest train line is um, Kings Langley or Watford train yeah. line. Um, so easy enough to get there. And the other reason it's easy to get there is it's because next to Harry Potter Studios. So there's always buses and buses coming from Watford Junction to that hotel because it physically is next to Harry Potter um, Studios. So if you're into Harry Potter, people go, oh, I know that. I think, golly, you've been there already, but you hadn't thought of it in any concept. Um, uh, it starts at 10 registration. Um, then as, I, as you've heard, there's quite a lot going on during the day, including a lovely um, lunch, yeah. um, Coffee and croissants in the morning, tea and cake in the afternoon. So you ain't going to be hungry. Um, and I know the event we met at the other week. My goodness, the food was delicious. <laughs> yeah, the absolutely was so lovely. And, just kept uh, and then all, all food afterwards, us. there is, if you want to stay on after we finish doing the talks and things, there is time for you to go and do a yoga class or do a bit of reflexology. And after that, we're having cocktails, mocktails, and hopefully, I've been promised, a bit of magic from one of my um, my guest sons, who's, gonna, who's part of the magic circle, come and do a bit of magic with us as we have a few cocktails before people say, and and celebrate again. And yeah, music all through the day. So how and where can people obtain a ticket? So tickets are available through Eventbrite. So if you put in 12 Wise Women, it's my turn. The tickets will come up. But they also, you can access them through Facebook. So if you go on to see what events are coming up in October, it will, it will come up there. And the same in LinkedIn. All leads to the I'll same share, I will share the links in the description so that people can, can find it. Absolutely. And yeah, you are more than welcome. And, and if there's any, if you've got any um, challenges with getting through, I know you can contact Jane and Jane will contact me and we, we will get it sorted out. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, the more, the more, the merrier. But it definitely, definitely is, is going to be a celebration of us as strong women, but also, you know, sharing ideas and thoughts about actually how we can be bigger and brighter for the next step of our life. Because that's, why we're not here to fade away this is not fading away time no absolutely and that's you know you're uplifting everybody and shine brightly and step into our power the, the time is now it's our it's our turn it's our turn mate. it's our turn clear the way yeah. <laughs> so i'm just so delighted that you agreed to come on and let me um interview you um, and I know because I know that our passions and um, beliefs align very much um, in the same way. And I totally believe in uplifting women and empowering them with makeup. But I also do it with positivity and um, coaching skills. I quite often when I'm hairdressing, actually, they don't even realise I'm life coaching them. Um, but that's an innate hairdressing mm. thing. It's sort of evolved having been in hairdressing for 30 years it just made it was a sensible sensible thing to just then get it accredited because I think hairdressers are life coaches or oh. at least sounding boards yeah. so really delighted to to interview you and I really appreciate your time and I know I just know the interview uh, the viewers are going to thoroughly enjoy it so thank you very very much for joining me today Jane, it has been a delight and a real privilege, and I can't wait to see you in October. Yeah, it's uh, say, I am excited by the whole thing and excited about making even more connections 
you know, yeah, and you're, when you talk about it, your passion and excitement really, it, it lights up the screen. Well, absolutely bomb here. And Jane, yeah, thank you for this opportunity to share it with, with other people. Um, and looking forward to seeing all the videos and interviews that you do. Thank you so much. Thank you're you. Welcome. Oh.